Welcome to my first of two tutorials about spline curvature. Let's start by creating two lines that cross. And right click done. Here's my second line. Let's apply a coincident constraint between the midpoints of the two lines. Right click and done. Now let's apply some dimensions. The longer line will make two inches. OK, and the shorter line will make half of the length of the first line. Now I'm going to create four elliptical closed loop splines. And close. Right click, done. Let's make this spline red. Right click, properties. We'll change the line color. Apply and OK. Now let's do another spline starting from a different point. Close the loop as well. Right click, done. I'm going to change the color of my second spline. Right click, properties. Line color, let's make it green. Apply and OK. Two more splines to go. Activate the spline tool. Now we'll start from this point. There's a method to my bandas I will explain shortly. Let's close the loop, right click done. And let's select our most recent spline and change this color as well. Right click, properties. Let's change the line color to magenta this time. Apply and OK. One more spline. And let's start from this point. We'll close the loop and right click done. Let's zoom in a little bit. As you can see, the splines are obviously not identical, and that's because the curvature at any given point of a spline depends upon where the spline starts and ends. Let's make some minor adjustments that make this effect even more pronounced. Let's begin by activating the Show Constraints tool. It's on the Constrain panel. Right click, done. Let's delete the coincident constraint here. And let's grab this line and drag it up and down a little bit. Now you can see that the effect in the difference of curvature is much more pronounced. We're able to change how spline data points fit on a spline. We use what's called the fit method. There's a few different fit methods available to us in Inventor. Right click on a spline point and select fit method. There's three options here. Standard. AutoCAD and Minimum Energy. Actually, let me show you this menu from a different point so that the flyout fits better in my screen. The AutoCAD method is the same method that's used by AutoCAD. The standard method generates a curve with a smoother continuity than the spline fitting method of AutoCAD. The Minimum Energy option, this generates an even smoother curve than the standard method. A spline contains a lot of data, actually, and the more of this data you use, the smoother the curve will be. And, correspondingly, a surface that's generated from a minimum energy spline method requires more computer power to process than the other two methods we covered here. Let's change the fit method to minimum energy for all four of our splines. Right-click, select fit method, and then minimum energy. Fit method, minimum energy, and the red spline. Fit method, minimum energy. One more to go. Fit method, minimum energy. As you can see, there is a significantly better curvature distribution. OK, let's undo and restore to the previous fit method. Now let's apply a coincident constraint between this point and this point. Right click, done. Let me create another line here. Right click, done. And activate the line tool again. Let's create a line here. Right click, done. Now let's activate the spline tool. 
We'll create a spline between these two points. Right click Done. Right click Properties. We'll make this new spline black. Apply and OK. Now let's add a tangency between the spline and the lines I just created. Right click, Done. Let's create one more spline. Right click, Create. Right click, Done. Right click, Properties. Let's make it yellow. Let's apply a smooth constraint as well between the spline and this line. And between this spline and this line. Right click, Done. Let's right click, Display Curvature. Let's right click on this spline as well. Display Curvature. As you see, for the G2 continuity or smooth method, the transition is indeed much smoother at this point. Let's create one more spline. It'll be between these three points. Right click, Create. Right click, Done. As you see, the curvature depends upon the method that you use to create the spline. I'm going to pick up from here in my next tutorial. This concludes my first chapter on spline curvature.